Hey guys, I'm secretly filming from the lab in Ever City right now. No one's supposed to know that I'm here today, but I just want to show you how does our lab looks like. So come on, follow me. So we used to have more PCs in the lab, but right now due to all these quarantine guidelines, we also practice social distancing in the lab. So as you can see here, even though if you are sitting just next to your girlfriend, you still might not be able to hold her hand in a class like, because it's actually uh, 3 to 4 meters away from each other. So in the first lab, we are going to start easy and we will be learning about some common network commands and services that you might find useful in computer networking and you'll also be using quite frequently in this subject. So let's get started. So in this step, we are going to do most of the exercise using the command on a keyboard instead of using a mouse so that you look like a pro. So this step, it is supposed to sound way cooler if you are having a mechanical keyboard. That is the sound of a pro. Most of the devices on a computer network can be having a different IP address. How can we find out what is the IP address of a particular machine on a network? To do so, we'll be using the ipconfig command. This command shows us all the necessary IP configuration information about a computer. To type this command, simply open the command prompt on your Windows machine. Now, if you are using a Mac machine, then you should use terminal in the place of the command prompt. In this example, we can tell that this machine is currently having the IP address of 192.168. Dot one dot ten. We also know that this machine is currently connected to the internet through a router with the IP address of 192.168.1.1. The default gateway address that you are seeing here represents the address of the router on this network. So there's actually two ways for us to assign IP address to a machine. You can either assign an address manually using the static IP address or you can do this automatically using the DHCP server. To check if you have already connected to a network, you can simply ping any other host on the network. In this example, we use PC1 with the IP address 192.168.1.3 to ping PC2 with the IP address 192.168.1.2. To show you that I am currently on PC1, let's check the IP address of the machine. So as you can see here, we are currently having the IP address 1.3 which is the IP address of PC1. 
Next, we are going to ping PC2 with the IP address of 1.2. Here, we simply use the command ping followed by the IP address of the destination host, which is the IP address of PC2. So over here, we will ping 192.168.1.2. From the result, you can see that the ping is successful, meaning that PC1 is currently connected to PC2. One other job of a network administrator is to set up networking on the machines so that they can connect to the network. In this example, I am supposed to configure the machines to my left. To do so, I might have to find a way to move my lazy ass to the machines to perform the configurations. But with remote login, we can now connect to any host on the network from a remote location to perform any kind of configurations. This means that we no longer need to travel to a physical location to perform any kind of configuration work, but instead, we can do it from the comfort from our home. Now, let's take a look at how does Telnet works. But, we are living in a world where I trust nobody and nobody trusts me. In some cases, Telnet might not be the most secure way for us to do remote login. This is because Telnet sends data in plain text. A plain text is a kind of message that is sent across the network without any encryptions or security protections. This is dangerous especially if the message is intercepted by a hacker where the hacker can steal the message or change the message content before resending it back to the receiver. 
For a more secure way to do remote connections, we can use SSH to do remote login that comes with encryption built in. In SSH, all the packets that are being sent to the receiver are encrypted with the keys. These security keys are only processed by the sender and the receiver. When the attacker got the message in the middle, the attacker would not be able to unpack the message without the key. This is how the message can be sent securely. You'll learn more about how to use Telnet and SSH in the lab. So, see you in the lab.